Hello, everyone. Here is Heidi from Italy, from the Wisdom Factory, but also from Paradiso Integrale. This is the house, the place where we are now. And you need to know it's the 3rd of January, is it? Mm -hmm. And we are sitting outside in the sun because it's wonderful weather. And today I have my two friends here, Manuela and Peaceful, and we found each other by a project which they have. And we wanted to talk about this project because it might be interesting also for you. The project is, we can say co-housing or something. Yeah, okay. Living community. Yeah. But before we do that, mm -hmm. I ask you to say some words about yourself and then we go into the topic. Okay. Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm Manuela, I'm a German, but I've lived in the UK for 27 years. I've uh, worked in business there. However, I've always had a great passion for older people. So I have uh, worked with old people. I've worked in a care home for a year. I've taken a sabbatical to work in sheltered housing. I've done everything from uh, exercise to music to dementia cafes. I volunteered in palliative care. So that's been my passion throughout my life, although I've done something completely different on the surface. I worked in engineering as a general manager, a manufacturing industry. So very, very different worlds. However, I always knew I would follow my passion to set up a community where people can grow older together. So last year, I was fortunate enough to meet Peaceful, who was also willing to leave the UK, which I had planned for some time. And here we are now, uh, very fortunate to have found Heidi. Uh, there are no coincidences in life, I believe. So yeah, we're here with joint forces now to, to make this a reality. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, me so far. And that means we have a certain age and, you know, you must not be 80 years old. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we feel that, uh, yeah, we're young, we're alive, we're, we're, we're not thinking care home here, no. but uh, we just feel joint forces are better than, than being on your own, in particular in, in this current climate. And you? you? My name is Peaceful Warrior. Um, I, I grew up in uh, and did an engineering apprenticeship and decided I didn't want to stay in uh, a factory for the rest of my life. So went around the world, basically um, learning new things. Um, I did a lot of um, construction work and uh, maintenance and things, skills that I already had. Um, but eventually I, I uh, had these experiences which led me to the idea that the best way I could use my time and my efforts was to use those skills and those uh, and that knowledge in in a way of sharing with others and I managed synchronistically you might say to bump into people who were already interested in running um, kind of community projects so for quite a number of years I've been involved in in the UK in um, co-housing projects in um, recycling projects in community projects and gained a lot of experience uh, in how to um, use those uh, skills from my uh, past. Um, and of course, when I met Manuela, little, little more than, uh, a, uh, well, not even a year ago, um, mm -hmm. we, we quickly gelled um, with, that, with this idea that Manuela had, had about the, um, you know, the, the, the living community. And it's something that I'd, I'd been trying to do in a group called the Abundant Earth Community in uh, Lincoln, uh, UK. Um, this project would be based mainly around um, co-housing, cooperative living, cooperative working, but also with the added um, side um, of building houses that were environmentally friendly, you know, eco-houses, uh, low-impact uh, houses using construction, low-impact construction methods, using local materials to build things. Um, and I worked with the Lincoln University on that for a couple of years. Uh, with the arch arch um, architectural department and uh, some friends who are working in the university. Um, and from that, uh, we decided that a project that we could build together was this living community, but to include uh, many other facets like uh, permaculture for example, 
and cooperative living. Um, and I'm a big fan of uh, permaculture. I've, I did a permaculture design course, and I see how that's very, very useful in bringing uh, all of the elements together, not just people, but elements together to make a living community work. So that's my passion. And that's really good because not by chance we met each other. I, when I still was with Mark, who unfortunately died, we thought uh, to do something with this house, to attract people here to live together. We never found the right ones. And lately, maybe because of this strange situation of the world, I don't know, people self-select and people arrive with uh, whom I would think I could and I would like to live together. I mean, my house is nice and everything, but it's maybe not the right house for old, old people because we have a very, maybe afterwards we do a little uh, video. Uh, it's steep and we have everywhere uh, stairs to go, not everywhere, but most of the apartments have stairs. So projecting for old age, older age, old age, I mean, I had problems with my knees, so I know what it is when you have to go up the, uh, the, um, the stairs and you don't really want to. <clears throat> so for very old age, that might not be the right uh, thing, but we have planned maybe do something else here in, in, together with these people here. And uh, I want to give over to Manuela because she has already projected this uh, thing for many years when it was pre-C, pre-COVID, mm. and now the situation is a little bit changed. Can you tell us a little bit about your original project mm. and how then it changed into something new? And So my original project was called the Hedwig Schenkel House. It was um, dedicated to my grandma, who I was very close to but who also inspired me because despite all challenges that she had in older age, lots of strokes, she lost her hearing, she couldn't walk properly, but she persevered every day. She got up with a smile, she got dressed, um, and she really instilled in me that you can have passions and uh, enthusiasm until, until the end of your days. So I dedicated the project to her and for me, the most important thing, I did a lot of research, uh, research on care homes, on senior luxury residences, on how people wanted to spend um, their later years. And I wanted to do a fusion where it was quite a large community. And that was mainly due to financial reasons, because I also calculated the whole thing from toilet rolls to buying a tractor. <laughs> it took me years. Um, and basically, in the end, I said a healthy number to make this uh, sustainable financially would be 20 to 25 people. In my um, version of the project, uh, we had everyone had their own bedroom and bathroom. However, all the communal spaces were shared and meals were cooked together and eaten together. So for me, it was very important to feel this purpose in life, to be involved in the community, not, not to stand in the kitchen every day, each person was helping once a week, but to just be in, involved and not be isolated in your room, um, not, not sit there on your own in the evening, so that you have a, a choice of both. You have spaces to be alone. We all need alone time. I think we're, we're exactly like that. But you want to have people around you when, when you want them and when you need them. So I traveled to Italy several times. Once I knew the project was going to be in Italy, I looked at properties. I made sure it was all feasible from a financial and practical point of view. However, now circumstances have changed quite a lot, and that's why I believe I've also been bored here and together with, uh, with uh, Heidi and Peaceful that uh, I had planned to set this up in 2023, so I wasn't going to leave the UK until 2022, the end. So here we are now, uh, because the world has changed, and it seems there's more of an immediacy to make this work. We also don't know what's going to happen to the financial system. So my model was still based on having financial investors as well as the people who, who join the project paying rent. So none of us know what's going to happen now. So we've had to speed up the process and I've always said I'm going to be liquid. 
liquid. I'm going to be like a river. I'm going to flow and I'm not set on that's how it's going to be. I always knew it was going to be, but I didn't know the exact details and I knew I was going to be flexible no matter what. So whilst this Hedwig Schenkel house was very close to my heart, as my grandma was, when I met Peaceful and he had the idea of abundant earth community, I straight away was able to let go and we now named it the Share It community. So that is a good thing in a way for me to see that I can let go of certain concepts that I have in my head and adjust to, to the circumstances as they change. So we've now um, amazingly already got people interested, mainly German people, but um, yeah, we would like to have a mix of nationalities. Um, we'd like to have a mix of male, female, if, if possible. Um, there's always more females um, interested in these kind of projects. However, we're, we're wishing for a mix. And we now uh, have developed a slightly different concept in terms of financial uh, feasibility. So we're hoping that most people who come to the project can invest a certain amount of funds to buy the property jointly and that everyone has um, one, one, one say in all the decision making that we may, we do. However, we are well aware that not everyone has the same amount of, of financial funds available straight away in the bank. Some people might have to sell a property, um, others might not have the funds but fit very well within our community. So we're, we're currently changing the model to accommodate that. We're listening to people, we're meeting people in person, we're meeting people on Zoom, which is fantastic. And, um, and I think it's going to work. However, now we're also peaceful and I have looked at about 15 properties in the last month or so, and they, they are in very different price ranges. So we feel that we might have to reduce the number of people in the community to, to about 10 to 15, which we think is also a bit more comfortable when you live together. And uh, listening to people as well that at the current age that we are, we're all quite independent people. And we like that. We like that we have conscious people on, on board. We have strong people on board. We have people who like being with themselves on board. And uh, yeah, for now, we would say that it'll be nice to share some meals together, maybe two, three times a week, but not every day and not three meals a day. Because yes, uh, where we are now, that's not necessary. However, I still believe when we get older, that's a wonderful function to have because then we need the support. We might not be able to make our own meals. And so we can adapt together as we grow older and as we all have different capabilities. So yeah, it's, it's been a journey. It's been a journey from a large concept, very um, business-minded, financially-minded. I've always had the people at, 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 uh, at heart. The people are the most important thing, not the money, but I wanted it to work. I didn't want it to be a bubble that then never happened. So I always knew it was going to happen, but I also knew it had to be adapted according to circumstances. Yeah, yeah. And in these circumstances today, I don't think it's a wise idea to uh, get big loans from somewhere. Mm. So mm. we need to find uh, people who have enough financial uh, possibilities to at least buy the, the initial uh, place and have something left for, to, for adjustments and maybe build some other room with a bathroom yeah. and something like this. Yeah. And um, the same thing is for my house. I thought uh, about having a school here, an alternative school, and we are already uh, trying to, to do that. And it's very nice. Children around and not everybody who is getting older wants that, mm. but uh, it is a good thing. And I thought, you know, if I can sell that and somebody takes at heart some younger people the school project and the ground, I have 10 hectares here, you know, you can do a lot if you have, you know, 30 years ago, <laughs> I also uh, did a lot, but in a certain age, you don't really want to do that anymore so much at least and alone, <laughs> even less. So in my place would be younger people who want to create something and have a certain 
possibility, financial, or an, an uncle who doesn't know what to do with the, uh, with the money and doesn't want to lose it in, a, in a, the next financial crash or something, that would be a good idea. And we hope to have these uh, places nearby so that we can combine our efforts to, to create a new way of being together. Mm -hmm. separately the older people from the younger people mm. but with how can you say fluidity that yes. you can uh, pass there we older people we have so much to give to younger people mm -hmm. you know and it is such a joy to be able to teach uh, younger people what what you know for instance in my case opera and mm -hmm. classical music the young guys from seven to 14, they watch like this, the Christmas oratorio. They have never heard that before, but they were sitting there and watching. And it's such a joy to give the cultural um, input to people who otherwise maybe would never have heard that, no? Mm -hmm. So that's my thing. Now go over to, <laughs> to, to the projects uh, and to, to what exactly you, would like people to to be and to contribute and what mindset they should have and so on for me it's important to have people who i really click with and these two came and click you know and some others too but not everybody mm -hmm. so we would need to get to know each other and i think quickly because i'm very afraid that this year or next year things will go uh quite in a different way than we would like to so mm -hmm. would you, you like to say something yeah, yeah so yeah. um very much what heidi was saying is that we we don't, certainly we don't want to be discriminatory about who joins the project because it's all about the people who have the well, for us about the people who have energy who want to do this who want to not particularly escape but want to move forward with their lives if they're feel that you know there's oppression and uh, they're stuck because of circumstances in the, in this modern uh, era in this last few years and would like to live in a community where we cared about each other again um we, we want to provide a space for that we want to live in that community ourselves and we want to provide a, a space we, we we could actually just buy a house and live happily ever after but that isn't really um at my heart what i said to you before was that when I, uh, when I realized that I had all of these skills, some people call it talent maybe, but skills that could be used, they were of no value if I, only, I kept them to myself. They were only valuable when I was sharing them. So we, we, when we met and we, we discovered that this concept uh, uh, was very similar, what we wanted to do, we, we then realized that the, the foundation of all of this was sharing. And this is why we called it Share Italia, Share It Community. Um, and I have a big passion for cooperative living. I believe that uh, the cooperative movement that was uh, not started, but almost um, started in the modern era in Rochdale in England by the Rochdale pioneers, brought forward a way of um, working equitably. Um, of course, that was in, a, in, in the sense of a business and, um, and wholesale uh, retail industry. But later it grew into all other areas of life, as in housing, as in uh, community projects in, in, in every way, shape and form. And now, you know, several hundred years later, we've got this, um, we've got this uh, worldwide co-op, um, which operates by collaborating with each other. Now, obviously, these co-ops are independent and individual, but they, one of their tenants is that they must work with other co-ops. And that's what we found would be the, one of the, the great uh, aspects of this community is it isn't just people sharing the house uh, or the space that they live in but actually working collaboratively and cooperatively together so this is where this is where share it was born and of course that mean that possibly means that when people come along we 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 don't expect people to be a certain way of course but what we are hoping is that people understand that if you're going to receive something it comes largely from the things that you give away. That's been my life experience. The more I gave away, the more that came back to me. And we're hoping that people have that kind of a disposition. However, we also realise that a project of this uh, scale can't uh, exist or can't start without some financial capital investment. Um, and if we collect together enough people who have that capital, we can then purchase a project which would allow 
the living space and the working space and the social space for all of us to have that uh, place to be working collaboratively and cooperatively together. And of course, that we can also then include people who don't have capital, but maybe would be able to pay rent in that project too, so that we can have a whole range of people. And this is what we we're finding with the people we've already met, is that the ranges of ideas and skills and, and, and energy to do this is, is incredible. Um, so we're, this is what we're hoping to do. Um, yeah. But we need you. <laughs> we need people with energy and with passion. Mm -hmm. and a little bit of uh, capital if possible um to bring this to life i mean we've looked at some amazing properties and the it's very surprising that you've we've got properties from several million pounds to a few hundred thousand pounds and in that range there's so much ch choice of what we could do use to live in however some things are would need renovation some things would need um more uh, more spaces providing and so we're this is why we're going out again this year in the next few weeks to, to look at more properties so that we can give uh, a better overview of what's available. But I can tell you this, in Italy at the moment, house prices are very, very low in comparison to the rest of Europe. I mean, we've been to see a property. Too bad for me if I want to yeah, say that. Exactly, exactly, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> but we, uh, but mm. we have been to a property that had previously been valued at four and a half million euros. And when we went to see it, it was valued at at one and a half million and since then without any in, in, uh, input from us the uh, the agents rang us and they'd reduced the price to further three hundred and fifty thousand pounds to 1.15 million mm. now maybe that was just one isolated case but we don't think so because a lot of the properties that we've seen they're very keen to sell and it's not about exploiting anybody uh but a lot of these people who have these places have other houses or other businesses and they can't afford in the current climate to keep everything going. Yeah. So they need to get rid of it because it's costing them money to keep these things. Yeah. So we feel that if people came on board quite quickly with some capital, we could buy some amazing, certainly within the next six to eight months, we could buy some amazing properties that would give us all a super luxury um, exp experience of living but also the, the, the vast area, uh, some of these areas of land were vast. Um, and obviously another thing that we want to mention is that we, we're looking, because of the current climate, uh, you know, we don't want to use those words, you know what we're talking about, but in the current climate, the need for sustainability is ever greater. So we're looking at places with um, wells, access to water. We're looking at places with potentially already solar panels fitted, access to woodland, so we can get um, we can get wood for fires and uh, you know and um, log burners. If we came, you know, if the electricity went down, for example, we would have a way of heating and lighting the property and this mm -hmm. kind of thing. So we're looking at all of those aspects now because we don't know what the world will be in the next six, ten. Yeah. months a year two years um and we're not worried we're not we're not we're, we're not running around in panic here but we are saying this we're aware that things are changing and that we need to do something positive and if you come on board with us and obviously if we get on yeah everyone's great. a winner yeah and there are two possibilities one is one of these big places which you said where many people are together the other is as there are so many places here around to 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 be sold to have uh, single pockets of, yes. of people together and we uh, maybe it's even in the reach of walking or of a bicycle we are distant and can still create a community that's more for the people who want to be a little bit more separate mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not all together but we would be connected in a let's say a bit different way but but still connected and that was my original plan to find uh, people who would um either rent one of my apartments or also buy the little things which are here around the, the one here down here is uh, you know we if, saw a very beautiful one very very close to Heidi's yeah. house that uh, yeah I, I was in awe yeah. of the and views. theoretically yeah. even the neighbor's house uh, would be sold for sale. and other yeah. apartments are in mm -hmm. five minutes uh, yeah. from here to be sold so that could also be a, a possibility mm -hmm. and I, I would love to create a sort of a 
a, a village. Yes. yes. What I wanted to say, you said before collaboration is important, but what is for me so important is sharing of responsibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, not only collaborate, and as it happens to me, I am the boss. I have to decide everything. I have to take out the money for everything. And that's, no, you know, that's at the long run mm -hmm. is not sustainable for me as I get, I'm getting older too, mm. uh, unfortunately. <laughs> that is exactly one of the reasons why we we thought that if we created a community, share it, for example, either with a model of one property or with a model of several properties, uh, we could do that because the the there, there could be a, a management organisational team which kept uh, an eye on these things. Those people who felt more like Manuela, who felt more uh, inclined to doing the admin and uh, and the planning and etc. You know, I, I have a lot of skills around uh, maintenance and food growing and things like that, you know. So obviously, throughout the community, we could we could share those things, but then no one person had to take the strain mm. of the financial decision making of organizing things. And, uh, you know, this is why, where we feel that share it would be a, a beautiful idea for people. Absolutely. Um, and you can, you know, as I said, it's not a prescribed um, level of uh, of. Uh, investiture you know you come along with your own personality your own skills your own thoughts your own ideas and we welcome all those and we talk about them and between us we create something magical in co-creation mm. that's but what there is saying. one thing people need to be willing to go through conflicts mm -hmm. in a good yes. way yes. yeah you know not just say no, 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 no and, and go away which we had these uh, situations here in my house but but wanting to assume that the other one has no bad will yeah, and that we are willing to find a solution for certain problems and what we need to learn even in the getting older, but even before is to let go a little bit of the ego, mm -hmm. you know, and just see what is my ego drive, we could learn and grow Absolutely. in this situation and this willingness to learn and grow I think mm. this would be a prerequisite for people that's and why I always said I always said it's not collaboration it's co-creation co and I'm not saying we're all yeah. able to do that yet I including myself oh, I'm learning exactly learning camp. <laughs> like you said I've seen the all the levels of okay you just cooperate with each other because you have to or you're doing it because you're getting something out of it mm -hmm. you then collaborate with each other because um, yes you've decided we have a common purpose or each person has gets um, to their own purpose by working with other people but I still think co-creation is a completely different level and I I mean even now we're living in a mini community here um, everyone has their challenges of doing that I did the same in the UK I had a little mini housing uh, just having people living in my house with me and I think this learning this openness to learning that it's proper co-creation I'm even finding it with 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 us too you know we all had we both had a project idea in our head but we're fusing it now and and we're learning to let go of the ego mm -hmm. and it's a it's a process but as Heidi said it's just the openness to the process that's required it's not that you have to be perfectly uh, skilled in it yet uh, at this point in yeah. time and I want to put it into a bigger uh, framework because I think for our uh, humanities to survive we have to create and be able to live together in a different way mm -hmm. and we don't say we know how to do this but we have the possibility to practice it yes. and to find out and I think this is the task for this century for, Absolutely. for people to find out how to do life differently mm -hmm. and that's uh, people with this idea are very welcome mm. <laughs> and it's interesting we've met some people haven't we people who have a very perfectly happy life where they are now but they're also realizing things are going to change times are getting more challenging we need to join forces um go back to a more of a concept of the olden days where in the village everyone supported each mm. other but sadly that's not the case nowadays we so create the new villages mm -hmm. yeah absolutely <laughs> Yeah, so I think we have given a little bit of an impression of mm -hmm. what we are up to and mm -hmm. of what we invite you in. And your uh, website is share minus it dot share hyphen it dot earth dot earth. Yeah. And the from thy website, my website from this house is paradiso integrale dot com. 
So connect with us and we are so excited. Yeah, yeah. it'd be great to, to have more people on board. We and look forward to meeting you soon. Further yeah. opinions. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And Bye. See you again. See you soon. Bye.